Hi there, welcome to Naturally Pink. Today I'm going to be making the pinafore dress and shirt from the show The Queen's Gambit. I pretty much basically just want almost everything that she wears in that show up until a certain point where it starts to get more mod and not really my thing. But the pinafore dress has been released as a free pattern off of Mood's list of free patterns. And I didn't know it at the time. It also came with the shirt that goes underneath the dress. But I also found a different shirt on the Mood's free pattern list that I really liked and I thought would go good with the dress. So I'm actually going to be making one pinafore and two technically three shirts because I made the second shirt out of two different materials because I just, I mean, I liked it a lot. So yeah, that's basically the gist of today's video and uh, enjoy. Okay, so I got, I think about three yards of this dusty gray blue fabric, which I'm pretty sure is brushed cotton if I remember correctly. And you can see immediately that it's not going to be wide enough. So I'm going to be cutting out the bodice pieces first so that I can determine exactly how much I'm going to have to work with for the skirt. And I am of course trying to squeeze as much as I can out of this little bit of fabric to leave myself as much as possible for the skirt. First I trace my pattern pieces out onto the fabric with chalk as per usual. making sure I include the dart placement on anything that has a dart, and also making sure that I extend the dart line to the inside of the panel because that little outside bit's about to get cut off. And then I go ahead and cut all my pattern pieces out. For some reason, this material is really hard to cut, so much so that I almost accused my entire family of fabric scissor abuse. For the skirt, since the fabric bolt was not nearly wide enough, I took what I had left and folded it the other way, creating four layers. So instead of having the selvage to selvage, the selvage ends are opposite each other. This technically puts it not on grain for the pattern piece, but being that it's a half circle and therefore each edge is either on grain or not, I figured it hardly matters. It still doesn't quite fit, so the skirt will be ever so slightly shorter than it should be, but whatever. Same as with the bodice, I trace it with chalk before cutting it out. I'm also just leaving that selvage edge in place instead of making a chalk line and stuff, but I am cutting off the fluff. The first seams to get sewn are the long skirt seams. I do have to put a seam down the center front because of my fabric issue, but I hardly even notice that when it's all done. The skirt seams are the easiest part and also will be necessary to have that completed before the bodice can be sized and attached. All of these seams will be French seams, so first it's sewn with the wrong sides together. Okay, so that's going to be the inside seam and we're going to trim that. And then trimmed. Flipped. French seam time. and then sewn with right sides together as normal. So then when you open it to the right side, you have your regular seam, but no raw edge inside. So now I need to sew the side panels on. This dress doesn't have pockets. That will not do. So I proceed to draft a pocket using my usual place hand on fabric and draw around it method and get to ripping out the side seam so as to insert said pocket. Okay, 
The pockets also get French seams. Once the pockets are on, the side seam gets sewn shut with the exception of the pocket opening, instead sewing around the outer edge of the pocket also with a French seam. Sew them there. And I'm just going to sew this together a little bit at the top. Okay, the other side, we're going to do the pockets before we have to seam rip it out, like smart people. For the bodice, I have two back pieces, four front pieces, two facing pieces, and lining. So first, I sewed the two front pieces which have what I believe is called a princess seam. The princess seam is what I call a total pain in the ass. Fortunately, because the bodice is lined, I don't need to fuss with French seams here. Next, I sew the darts on the two back bodice pieces. Cut the threads extra long and then tie them with my customary three knots. And then the back gets sewn to the front at the side seam. The facing panel and lining panel get sewn together the same as the two front panels with the pain in the ass princess seam style. And then the back lining gets the same darts and sewn to the sides as the outer layer. Then all four shoulder pieces get sewn shut and the lining and outer layer are sewn together inside out. Neckline goes all the way down the front, so why can't they just say that? Starting with the two front seams and sewing across the back of the neck. Why are mood patterns always so confusing? <laughs> Anyway, once the lining and outer fabric are joined, I cut some notches into the heavily curved seams and then flip it right side out. And then this shit. Okay, so this is really freaking confusing, so I figured it out on one before I'm going to show you the other one. It says to turn this in a half an inch and press it. Whatever. And then it said, with the folded seam allowances together, so like sandwiched inside like that, pull the arm side to be partially inside out to sew along the pressed fold. So basically it's a pain in the butt. After it's pressed, I've got to like pull it out like this and then sew it. And then like when I get to this area that's very narrow, it's just really difficult to wrestle through the machine. Also, I put in a understitch here because um, just folding it in half, I didn't want the lining, um, especially back here, and in the arm's eye to pop out of the fold and be seen, so I put an understitch in, which I will also do uh, in the arm's eye. So. Get to that now. Okay, so that's ironed. I'm gonna make sure that it's ironed at sort of the same size as the other one so that they're as even as possible. Now 
Now that the edges are even, I can get around to sewing up the other arm's eye, like I just did with the first one, and totally know how to do that. So separated, pull it in at the pressing line. Fuck. I just freaking did this. This is what I did with the other one, except that the pins were a total pain in the ass to take out afterwards because they're not like in the right spot of where you're sewing where you would normally put a pin. So then I spent some time riding the struggle bus, attempting to pin two curved opposite edges together long before I actually get to sew it. The person in the photos making this on the website has a dress form, which I imagine makes pinning these curves easier. I don't have a dress form, so it just gets to be a pain in the ass. I have Venmo if anyone wants to contribute to the dress form, or proper camera, or mic. I'm pretty sure this fabric is fucking Kevlar or something because my scissors hate it, my pins hate it. And it's so pretty and soft. And once it's pinned, I begin the process of partially turning it inside out and sewing the seam shut to create an arm's eye with lining layer and outer layer. This involves unpinning a bit at a time, repositioning the entire situation, sewing about an inch, rinse and repeat, forever. Okay, somehow we've made it back to the beginning. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to top stitch. I can't top stitch all the way in because I can't get the sewing machine into this spot, but basically along the back and up the underarm in the front. So that involves opening it back up. Basically, or uh, not a uh, top stitch, understitch. Basically, to understitch, we are stitching seam allowance to the inside lining. Because there's a really drastic curve, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it up like this to kind of sew it with the curve. And yeah, we got to about the same spot as before. So now I'm just gonna press this down. Okay, when I was wrestling it through, I made a pucker right here, so I need to undo that. 
course, it's where the fucking back stitch is, so like, I have like four layers of seams to undo. Okay, let's put a new little back stitch up there. Okay. Cut. We good? We're good. Once I have two completed halves of the bodice, I pin the bottom edge together with the point of one side matching the princess seam of the other, creating the wrapped effect, and then baste that overlap together. Okay, front is attached. See, these patterns don't come with very good instructions, which I guess is whatever, but it's annoying. Okay, so French seam, we're gonna do wrong sides together first. And unfortunately, I know exactly where the front of my skirt is since I had to make a seam down the front of it, but we'll live. So if you didn't catch on, I then attached the bodice to the skirt with a French seam. Okay. Now we sew it. So like the French seams before, we are going to do it basically inside out and then flip it and then do it normally. But because there's so many variable edges on here, we're going to give it a bit more of a seam allowance than normal for our first pass to make sure everything stays together. And I am probably going to have to hand crank it through the side seams because they are yuck. Okay, so right now this should look like a dress sewn inside out. I'm going to trim this, take down some bulk and make it more even, flip it the other way, and then stitch it again. Let's see if I have the right zipper for this. Once the dress looks almost like a dress and I chose a zipper, I started overcasting the opening where the zipper goes, and then this happened. Well, that time I snapped my needle. So with a fresh needle, I hand crank across the waist seam and continue.
Okay, since the zipper isn't really long, where the fuck did it go? Okay, as I was saying, since my zipper isn't long enough to go down past the waistband, and I feel like having the waistband open is like a vital part of uh, me being able to get into something, I'm gonna probably put some buttons or something up at the top. But I do still need to add the zipper, so I'm gonna start it so that it comes just a couple inches below the waistband. This is an invisible zipper, so it gets sewn down one side, wrong sides together, and then the other side in the same manner. And then the skirt seams get sewn shut, French seam style, of course. And the zipper seams get folded under. Zipper installed and I have added a button that I covered with the fabric from the dress. That's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it works. This is just a piece of elastic that's sewed on. So yeah, and it fits. I'm so excited. Now for the shirts. Okay, so I'm going to seriously breeze through the fact that I made these shirts, partially because this video is already so long and partially because at this point I was in such a rush that I neglected to film a lot of it. So here we go. First I mark out and cut the fabric, you know, as usual. Then I sew a whole bunch of stuff off camera, including side seams, shoulders, facing, collar, and sleeves and cuffs. Then this bit in the middle here is measured for button placement. Half the buttons will go on one side and will be sewn into place, and the other half will have proper buttonholes. The sleeves also get buttons attached to make the cuff pointy, I guess? and then the aforementioned buttonholes with the auto buttonholer of doom. The next shirt is made by first sewing the lower corseted section with French seams, each of which are top stitched down and two side seams of which have boning sewn in. Then the back panel is attached to the two front panels at the shoulder seams using French seams and then at the side seams. The bodice top and corset bottom are pinned together at the seams and then the top is gathered to match the size of the bottom portion. and many pins later, they are sewn together. Next, the sleeves are sewn up the side, then gathered, pinned, and sewn into the arms I like every other sleeve I've ever done, but with French seams. The bottom edge of the sleeve also gets a gathering stitch, and then the cuff gets sewn in half incorrectly. I fix it later folded in on itself and the sleeve is gathered in and stitched on. The zipper is installed and finally the facing is attached and the bottom is hemmed. The cuff is hand stitched and done. All in all, I'd say I'm pretty happy with what I've made. I've never made shirts before and I have learned that basically I need to make them all longer and wider at the shoulders because I am wide at the shoulders. The pinafore I am so happy with it is absolutely perfect and the looks together I think are really cute. 